welcome you out to our store tonight. Tonight you're going to see something about your health, your wealth, and your future that is the most important thing to you, that, to your health, that there ever was, and it's the water you drink. Because you are 71% water, there's nothing more important to you than the water you drink in your life. Water is so important to our body that every organ in our body runs on water. We're lubricated with water, we're heated with water, we're cooled with water. When we get something in our eye, water comes there to wash it out. Water is so important. Water carries nutrients into our body. There's nothing more important to our health, our wealth, and our future than the water we drink. And tonight, you're going to have a lot of questions as we do the show. And I'd like you to hold those questions to the end. And I probably will answer most of your questions as we go through the show. Now, through the other show, you're going to see some things about water that you've probably never seen before. And I want you to think about it and make a decision in your own personal life what you're going to do about the water you're drinking because that's your job tonight as we go through this show is to decide what kind of water you're going to drink from now on. You're going to learn some things about water that you've never learned before. Now we're going to show you some water. This is tap water and we're going to kind of like put this on a, on a trial tonight and we're going to prove that this water is absolutely filthy and unable to do the job that water was intended to do. This is distilled water. We're going to prove that it's pure water. It's absolutely pure and it's the water we should put in our body and uh, we'll be able to see the difference between these two waters real quick. The first test we're going to do with water is called the boil test. And what we do is we boil down a half a cup of, of distilled water this pot over here. It's the only thing my wife lets me cook. And then we're going to boil down a half a cup of tap water in this pot over here. Now, if these waters are clean, when that water is all boiled out of those pots, the only thing that should be left in there is nothing, right? If the water's clean. We'll see which water is the cleanest. This is distilled, this is tap. We'll start that test because it takes a few minutes. But one question I have here, does water conduct electricity? You know, if it's tap water, it's absolutely filthy. We know it does. If I touch these two wires together, that light goes on. That's an open circuit. If he's an electrician, he'd call it a, a normally open circuit. If I put it in distilled water, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And that's nothing because those two wires aren't touching. That's an open circuit. It shouldn't light the light. But if I put it in tap water, it closes that gap. There's something in that water that's making that gap close. And the difference between these two waters is, this is absolutely filthy water, this is pure water. Tap water started out as distilled water. In nature, we have lakes, rivers, and streams. The sun heats these vessels of water up and the vapor rises to the upper atmosphere where it's cooled and condensed back into water. Whenever you take water and change it to vapor, and then back to water, just like this vapor's coming out of the pot here, that's distillation. Rainwater, though, falls through an absolutely filthy atmosphere. It's completely void of anything in it. It's, it's distilled water. But everything in the air is gathered up by the distilled water and taken down to the earth. So you have emissions from factories, smog from cities, solvents from all kinds of chemicals, emissions from cars, trains, planes, and buses. All that is in the air. That's one reason the light is on in the tap water. Our tap water hits the ground. In one teaspoon of dirt, we have billions of bacterium, virus, and parasites. The reason we do is because every animal and insect that's ever lived, reproduced, died, and decomposed has become part of the soil, and that's the food for them. When the rain hits the ground, it picks up these bacterium, virus, parasites, decayed animals, and insects, carries them to a lake, a river, a spring, a string, a well, it doesn't matter. And that water is, is full of everything that's in the soil. Uh, it comes to a lake, the fish live there, and they die there. And we drink that. We drink everything that's in the soil, every microbiome, every microorganism, everything that comes in contact with water, water absorbs and transports it. Our water comes to a treatment plant where we're chemically treating our water. That's why it's called a treatment plant. Our water is exposed to many chemicals. This is a, a newspaper from, from Utah 
called Capital Connections, News for and About People in State Government, the Utah State Seal. On the back of it, it says, Making Sure Your Water is Safe. It's written about Eva Nemensky. She has a PhD in environmental engineering. She's over all 50 water treatment plants in the state of Utah. She says right here, we're learning about very resistant pathogens in water. They're very difficult to kill, so you need strong disinfectants. These chemicals may ultimately cause cancer over your lifetime. So the question becomes, would you rather have diarrhea today or cancer tomorrow? So who wants diarrhea and who wants cancer? Pretty, pretty good choice there, huh? That's the two choices we have, drinking tap water. Uh, I think that uh, we should drink something else other than that. The cancer they're talking about is prostate cancer, bladder cancer, colon cancers. That's uh, your urinary tract cancers because that's where the water goes first and we're exposed to all the chemicals that's in those waters. We know chlorine mixes with acids in water and that causes trihalomethane compounds. It's linked to spontaneous miscarriages and various cancers. That's according to USA Today newspapers, John Hopkins University in, in New York. And uh, they're the ones that's conducted those tests. When our water leaves the water treatment plant, it goes through the pipe system. Sometimes these pipe systems are hundreds of miles long and hundreds of years old. Uh, in, in Ogden, Utah, where we're shooting this, our pipes are 108 years old. They're cast iron with lead joints coming out of a canyon, out of a reservoir. It goes for hundreds of miles here in the city, back and forth to different houses. Comes up into our tap, and we turn these taps on and drink out of our beautiful faucets and think nothing about the journey that that water was on. And it's a long, filthy journey because every pore that water's been is, is where we walk. So everything that's on the bottom of your shoe is in your water, if you ever think about it that way. That's why when we put the light in tap water, it conducts electricity. There's 80,000 chemicals in our, in our water. In 1903, we had three people and 100 dying with cancer. In that 100 years till now, we've developed 80,000 commercially produced chemicals. And right now, one in four people die with cancer. And one in three people get cancer. And the cancer rate's still rising. And you think about chemicals in our life. We wash our hair with chemicals. We brush our teeth with chemicals. We wash our clothes with chemicals. We have chemicals on our food. We're a chemical society. The only thing that takes that out of our body is the water we drink. Water absorbs and cleans everything out of our body as it goes through our system. Distilled water is way different. It doesn't conduct any electricity. We know it's absolutely pure water. The journey that distilled water takes is way different than tap water. We bring water to, in a boiling chamber to boil. The steam rises and leaves all the impurities behind in the boiling chamber. The steam forces the coil, the fan cools the coil, changes the steam into 99.9% .9 pure water. Periodically we drain this boiling chamber out. So when we make 50 gallons of water through the distillation process, what was in 50 gallons of water now is trapped in the boiling chamber. When we clean that out, we sometimes are totally amazed with the amount of filth that's in that boiling chamber. Like in Salt Lake City, that's what's in 50 gallons of Salt Lake City water after we turn the boiling chamber out. And people wonder why they're getting sick, why they have diseases. This is Ogden, Utah right here. That's 50 gallons of Ogden City water. Isn't that weird? How much filth is in tap water? You never would believe it unless you see it for yourself. Morgan, up where you work, this is uh, about 80 gallons of Morgan, Morgan City water. Does that look like one of the chemicals they add at the water treatment plant? It does, doesn't it? It's copper sulfate. Now the reason that they put copper sulfate in the water up there is because they have algae growing in the pipelines and copper sulfate is an algicide. Now algae won't hurt us, well, we can eat algae, but when it starts to die and rot in water, it smells, you've smelled the Great Salt Lake, when the algae starts to grow and, and rot, it's got quite a, an odor to it. Well, that, when it has that gas inside these pipelines and they inject chlorine into it, it creates trihalomethane gas. Okay? And that's very carcinogenic. That's where we come up with prostate cancer, bladder cancer, colon cancer. Uh, this is, some lady told me the other day, she only drinks spring water from North Ogden Spring. That's 30 gallons of the North Ogden Spring, you know, and that's 
that's what's in spring water. Whenever you're drinking right out of the dirt, right out of the ground, you're drinking dirt. You're drinking filth. You're drinking everywhere you've walked. Okay? You're drinking everything that's on the bottom of your shoe. It doesn't matter where that water's from. The filth is there. These inorganic minerals are what we're drinking. This is right out of a distiller. Does that look like it'd be nice for our inside of our body? Dr. Charles Mayo from the Mayo Clinic, he's got a clinic in Arizona and one in Minnesota. His quote here is, Water hardness or inorganic minerals in solution is the underlying cause of many, if not all, diseases resulting from poisons in the intestinal tract. These hard minerals pass from the intestinal walls and get into the lymphatic system, which deliver all of its products to the blood, which in turn is distributed to all parts of the body. This is the cause of much human disease. Dr. Charles Mayo of the Mayo Clinic. In Dr. Bannock's book, The Choice is Clear, he says if you're concerned about arthritis, hardening of the arteries, kidney stones, gallstones, cataracts, glaucoma, loss of hearing, diabetes, obesity, and emphysema, do not drink the inorganic minerals found in water. He just talked about the inorganic minerals. We've talked about 80,000 different chemicals in our water. We've talked about the insects, the bacteria, the virus, the parasites, the dead animals in our water. When I put a distiller in my home the very first week, this is what we took out of our distiller, that's what six people would have drank the first week. And when I got shown this to people and shown it to my wife and kids, I says, look, there's actually an animal hair in there. See that animal hair right there? There's six animal hairs in this bottle of water. I called the water guy out and I says, how come there's hair in our water this week? And he says, well, I thought we took that all out. I says, well, what was it? He says, we couldn't tell. It's too badly decomposed. I says, well, why didn't you tell everybody was drinking a dead animal this week? And he says, oh, don't worry. We put more chlorine in your water. So, you know, chlorine's 400,000 times more poisonous than DDT. It's linked to, to a lot of diseases, even cardiovascular disease, because it roughens up the uh, artery walls in, inside our blood stream and causes the inorganic minerals to start adhering to them because a rough spot makes it easier for things to stick. You may go around 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, 70 years before you have any cardiovascular disease cause you any problems. But if the wrong blood vessel gets plugged off in your heart, they call that a heart attack, don't they? If the wrong one gets plugged off in your brain, they call that a stroke. If the inorganic minerals get into our body, in our joints, in our ears, it causes aging diseases that we don't have any, any cure for. Right here in the laboratory, let's take distilled water through the same journey the tap water's been on and make the light go on it. We'll have to add a lot of things to it. First thing we'll add to it is bacteria, virus, and parasites. I'll wash my hands in it. Five parts per million will make this light go on. And we'll see just how dirty my hands are. Pretty clean hands, huh? The tap water is still hundreds of times filthier than the distilled water. But you know the real funny thing about it is, though, you won't drink this water now, will you? No. Why not? Because it has fewer. Yeah, but it's still hundreds of times cleaner than tap water. Did you see what your eyes just did to your brain now? You saw something in your water. What do you really want in your water? Nothing. Me too. That, when I saw this the first time, that's what I decided. I didn't want anything in my water. I wanted clean water. But we can take it a little bit further and, and make the light go on. This is uh, some of the inorganic minerals we get out of our distiller. We'll put some of that in there. We'll put some chemical from farms and factories in there. And we'll stir that around. So it's starting to look like Mount, Mountain Dew, right? That's what you're thinking. <laughs> now we'll take it to the water treatment plant where we'll add a little bit of technology to it. And we'll stir that around and we'll aerate it a little bit, just like even Aminsky's talking about there. Add a little technology to the water. The right amount of chemicals we can make that awful looking water look just like tap water. Isn't that cool? Now let's see if we made it tap water. Yep. Now, according to Ivan Minsky, 
That's safe water to drink. You all want to drink it now? Why not? It's safe. What's the definition of safe water? Won't cause diarrhea today. <laughs> Let's see what we've done here with the TDS meter. This TDS stands for total dissolved solids. That means anything that's totally dissolved in the water will show up with a TDS meter. Now, Ron, I want you to read this for me and tell me what parts per million that says. Zero. Zero, zero, zero parts per million. Now, tap water right from this Ogden City here. Let's see what that's saying. 296. 308 now. 308. 308 parts per million. Now this water that Teresa wouldn't drink, let's see what that was. After I threw all that, that filth in there. 56. 54. 54. It's still, what, six times cleaner than tap water. Can you imagine how much filth is in tap water? If you could see where that tap water's been, for all the carcasses of the animals, the dead insects, the inorganic minerals, the chemicals that's in this water. If you could see what was in that water that's making 296 parts per million, you'd never drink it. You'd never ever drink it. And you should. We only have 56 parts per million. You saw everything I put in there. You wouldn't even drink it after washing my hands in there. We had 26 little girls in here one night and they all washed their hands in here and still didn't get as dirty as tap water. Still didn't have as high a TDS reading as tap water. Let's check our pots out now over here and see what we've done. See how hot they are. Now this was tap water and this was distilled water. Is there a big difference there between the two waters? Quite a bit. This is just a half a cup of water. How many cups of water are we supposed to drink today? Eight cups. This is eight cups boiled down. That's what you're drinking in your body every single day. Eight cups of water. That's eight cups. That's one day. This is 30 days. This is 365 <coughs> days. And this is 10 years. How old are you? 45. 45. You've run 4.5 goes through your body. Okay? You can divide that out, every one of you. That's what your body has to deal with, drinking tap water. Our bodies are wonderful machines, aren't they? They can handle a lot of filth. But after so, much, so many years of drinking filth into our body, it has an accumulation effect. And someday it's going to cause us some health problems. If we had a brand new Lincoln Continental and we opened up the hood and poured this down the oil spout, of that car, what would the dealer say to us about the warranty on that engine? He'd say it was void, wouldn't he? And, and he, he should, but you know our water, our, our uh, body's the same way. It says here that even the finest piece of machinery on earth depends on proper maintenance to run smoothly. And our body is the most amazing machine on the face of the earth. It's run on solar power. We eat carbohydrates, and they're produced by the sun from plants that we eat. And we reproduce, and when we get a cut, we heal. We have a pretty neat machine. Does your car fix itself when it breaks? It doesn't, does it? Our bodies are 71% water. There's nothing more important to our body than the water we drink. And if we're putting this much filth into our machine every single day, we're we kind of voiding the warning on our machine. We are, aren't we? How long do we get to stay in our machine? Till we wear it out. Till we put enough filth in it and we wear it out. And then we get to leave our machine. So there's nothing more important to us than our health, is there? We can have all the money we want. We can have all the time we want. We can squander all the money and time we want. But if we squander our health, all our time and our money will be spent trying to get our health back. And water is very important. Your 71 trillion cells, and every day billions of them die. And the only thing that gets that out of our body, the only thing that carries the, the dead cells and spent minerals and vitamins out of our body, is the water we drink. Now if I went back out on the farm and worked all day long on a track and got totally filthy, 
and come to your house and have a bath in your bathtub and save the water, would you like to crawl into that bathtub and have a bath? Why not? The water's absolutely filthy, isn't it? Well, that's the same way with this water here. It was 296 parts per million, wasn't it? Do we expect that water to clean the inside of our body? That's what we're drinking water for. Three days without water and we'll die. If our water's already absolutely filthy, it's like taking a bath in a bathtub that's already filthy. What do you want to drink? What do you want to bathe in? You want to bathe in clean water, don't you? You should bathe the inside of your water body with clean water. Zero parts per million water is what we should be drinking. It carries the toxins out of our body. There's nothing more important to our body, our health, and our wealth, and our future than the water we drink. And if it's filthy water, it isn't going to do it. Out of all the waters you drink, what you want when you drink water is water that cleans your body. When we get water to this point, to the tap or, or distilled water, what we do is we drink it into our body, don't we? Let's see the difference between the two waters as they enter our body. This is tap water. We'll put 200 milliliters of, of tap water in, in this bottle. And this represents the filth that's in our body, some of the spent vitamins and minerals and all the filth that we get rid of every time we, we urinate. We'll put the same amount of filth in this bottle as we do the other one, but we'll just show you this one first. We'll put Twelve drops of filth in this body. We'll put the, the cap on. And as this water goes through, through your body, goes up to your brain and through all of your organs, around your body, you'll see something happening to this, to this water. As, as that water goes through your body, what's happening there? There's an accumulation of filth in that water, isn't there? You see that? When you piddle this water out, does it leave something in your body? It does, doesn't it? It isn't able to absorb and transport and eliminate the waste. Now this is distilled water in this body. We'll put 200 milliliters of water in this body. We're going to have it contend with the same amount of filth. This isn't magic or anything. This just shows you how well distilled water deals with filth. As that water goes through your body and through all your organs, not through your brain, it's actually able to absorb and transport and eliminate all the waste that's in your body. When you piddle this water out, it carries the filth with it. There's a big difference between the two waters, isn't there, in your body. The still water is able to transport and eliminate the waste out of your body. Now, does anyone have any questions about water, about tap water, or anything about water at the end of the show? I told you I'd give you some time. I do. There's some controversy about fluoride in the water. What can you tell us about that? You know, I don't really know. I just know that on a government toxicity chart that fluoride is just a little bit more poisonous than lead, and not quite as poisonous as arsenic. I do have two tubes of toothpaste here. One is fluoridated toothpaste and the other one is non-fluoridated. It's the same company. But on the back of the fluoride, fluoridated toothpaste it says that keep out of the reach of children under six years of age and if accidentally swallowed more than used during brushing, call Poison Control Center immediately. On the back of the unfluoridated toothpaste it says you can eat all you want. It doesn't have any warning at all. It's totally safe for children or anyone. Uh, I know that uh, sodium fluoride is quite a controversy right now in our drinking water. Uh, the EPA has come out to stand against fluoridation of, of drinking water. I'm not a scientist, so I don't know really if it's good or bad, but there's some very good sources out there that's reliable that says it's not good for us. For me, I think that, that fluoride or any other poison I don't want in my body. There's enough poisons in my body has to contend with right now. 
you look at the places where they use fluoride, it's in rat poison pesticides, uh, dental offices, municipalities, it's also used in drinking water. Does anyone else have another question about fluoride? I want to, I want, I would like to know if uh, distillation gets fluoride out and what other chemicals does it get out? Distillation gets all chemicals out of the water, including fluoride. Volatile gases, however, do distill across. That's why we put a post-carbon filter on the distiller and it carries a bigger spectrum of able to take out more things out of the water. Uh, a lot of your volatile gases are, are petroleums or oil. We know there's water, there's petroleum and oil in our water. Also, chlorine is a volatile gas, so the carbon filter takes it out also. Pesticides, many of them are pyrethroids and, and volatile gases made with petroleum products. So we know that distillation takes that out, boils across with the steam, but the carbon filter absorbs all that and takes that out, up to 99.9%. You have to drink millions of gallons to get any, any adverse effect from those chemicals. What's the difference between filtered water and distilled water? Filtered water, is water that's gone through filters like these here. Uh, filters are dark, they're wet, they're room temperature. They actually become breeding ground for bacteria, virus, and parasites. And actually they don't take out inorganic minerals. Uh, reverse osmosis is a filter that has a sediment filter, a carbon filter, and also it has a membrane filter that does take out the minerals and it does that by back washing through the filter after it builds up pressure. It's very wasteful. It wastes about 2 to 12 gallons of water per gallon uh, and it's not effective unless you buy a very expensive uh, unit. Does reverse osmosis take all the chemicals out? Reverse osmosis takes out many of the chemicals because they have a carbon filter on them but there's a lot of things reverse osmosis does not take out. Reverse osmosis leaves arsenic, bacterium, we know at least fluoride now, nitrates. And we know that 12 parts per, night, per million of nitrates causes blue baby syndrome. And also virus. It doesn't even remove any virus. Uh, sediment filters, they take out sediment. Carbon filters, they take out chlorine. They handle a little bit of detergent, a few pesticides and phosphates. Also some sediment and also sulfates. Deionization, it is, is good for a few more things. We get over here to reverse osmosis. Uh, reverse osmosis still leaves arsenic, bacterium. We know it doesn't take out all the fluorides now. It takes out some nitrates. It, it forgets to take out any virus. Steam distillation along with a post filter, a carbon post filter takes out, out everything that's in the water it significantly reduces every element in the water so we come out with nothing but pure H2O. Steam distillation takes out arsenic, bacterium, cadmium, calcium, chloride, chlorine, cryptosporidium, detergents, fluorides, lead, magnesium, nitrates, organics, pesticides, phosphates, radon, sediment, sodium, sulfates, and viruses. Uh, a small filter like this cartridge filter is effective on chlorine and that's about all it is effective for. Uh, cartridge filters, they're hard to replace, they grow biofilm. Over time, the quality of water degrades in filters, but in distillation the quality stays high. Even after hundreds of gallons have passed through a distiller, the quality of the water still is high. That's the problem with the filter. It's got a hole in it. If it's brand new, it might be working properly, but as it ages and as the, the volume of water goes through it, you don't know where you're at. You don't know what level of safety you're living in. We know that filters are wet and they're dark and they're room temperature and they uh, produce bacteria and virus and parasites. And if you, if you cut a filter open, it's full of slime. And that's called biofilm. That means there's bacteria in there growing. It's just like biofilm in our nose. We call it snot. And that's what gets in those filters and we're drinking through it. Because the more filth you get into the filter, the dirtier it is. You have a failure in your filter and you're drinking 
10,000 times more than you would if you just had tap water. So filters aren't really that great. Yes? What can you tell us about bottled water? Bottled water, there's a lot of states don't have any regulations on bottled water at all. On a government study, 25% of all bottled water was just ordinary tap water. Put in a bottle, there's not very many regulations on it at all. I don't know which bottles that was or what brands they were, but I know that water in a bottle sitting on a shelf in a grocery store can sit there for months on end. If it has any bacteria or virus or parasites in it, it can 10,000 times itself in the heat of the store during shipping or whatever. They're not refrigerated. It's just not safe water. There's some brands that are very good. There's some that aren't, but you'll have to read on the label and find out for yourself which ones they are. Uh, a lot of people say, I want to buy uh, distilled water in a bottle in the store, in a milk bottle. Uh, they're leaching out uh, all kinds of chemicals out of that plastic during the process of making this plastic bottle. Uh, it's made out of a lot of things like formaldehyde and other kinds of car carcinogenics that are linked to cancers of all kinds. And we see this on the news all the time about the, the safety of these bottles. They're not safe at all. They're unsafe. So you're just taking a risk by getting bottled water in a bottle, plus it's hundreds of times the price of ordinary tap water. Why spend uh, a dollar and a half for a liter of water because it's just ordinary tap water. It doesn't make any sense. When we started this show tonight, I told you you're going to have to make a decision of what you're going to do the rest of your life with what you drink. And you've learned a lot of things about water here tonight. Uh, distilled water is, is so clean that it doesn't make the open circuit close, but tap water is way different. What do you want in your body? What do you want to use in your body, in your machine? You get to stay in your machine as long as you keep it clean until you wear it out. If you're cleaning your body with, with distilled water, your machine will stay a lot cleaner than with tap water. There's a big difference. So you need to decide in your life what kind of water you're going to drink from now on.